Hello, this is Greg Allison from Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm coming to you today from my persimmon tree. Today I'm going to talk to you about three wild edibles that you can eat that are nutritious and have some degree of carbs. Something you need to survive in addition to all the leafy greens because you need energy. And most of what you find in wild edibles are green leafy uh, substances if, or meat, neither of which have much in the way of carbs. So this is one of my favorite fruit trees of all, the persimmon tree. And what I want you to look at Look at those green fruit up there. Those are really sour. If you eat those, it'll make you pucker your mouth up so much you won't believe it. Might be good for kissing the girl with the puckered up lips, but you know what, or a guy, depending on if you're a girl or what, your preferences are. <laughs> but, and that's still a bit green there too. And that's a bit green, but they're all getting right. Now look at these leaves. Persimmon leaves are kind of oblong. Pay attention to them. Look at them carefully. They're kind of oblong oval leaves. They're used in dark green. This is late in the summer. Today's the second day of September. Uh, persimmons are usually one of the fruits that gets ripe later in the fall. I have a tree here that's one of the earlier barren persimmon trees. Uh, most of them aren't even close to barren, but I've already got ripe fruit here. Now some of these get kind of mushy. But I love persimmons, and they have large seeds in them. Yeah, I got that little thing left over from the flower. Mmm. When they're ripe, they're good. They're mushy. But they have these large seeds. Oops, drop one. And the old timers take these large seeds and they crack them open and they look for spoons and forks and knives in them to tell weather. We're not getting into that today. That one's got a bad spot on it. Just bite it off. Now, it may not be pretty deep. But they're good, unless they're a little bit green. The green ones will really make you pucker up. Well, persimmons, the sweet fruit, a good source for carbs. They grow in a lot of places, wild, on roadsides and the edge of woods. And they make prodigious fruit. Look at those. And you need to find these in some places. When I was a kid, where I grew up, they wouldn't even be sweet until after it come a frost. But this is an earlier barren, barren tree than a lot of them. So you can find these things usually up through November. So it's a real late barren fruit. So I'm also going to talk about huckleberries. But I don't have any barren this year. I'll show you the bushes. And I'm going to talk to you about muscadines. So I'm talking about three wild edibles. And the muscadines, I'll show you those. And I'll talk about eating grape leaves. And we'll talk a little bit about honeysuckle also. So, for more videos on wild edibles, please, and other things, prepping, go in your own garden, go and food indoors, outdoors, and all these small components videos again before too long, and wild medicinal videos, and reasons why to prep. Be sure to uh, subscribe to my channel, if you're not already done so. Click the update notification bell, and check the links below to support my channel. I sell worms. You want to grow your own garden if you don't want to have to buy uh, fertilizers and worm supplies, www.greengregs.com. If you want to have seeds for growing your garden, you need the heirloom seeds. Check out True Leaf Market. Heirloom seeds are what you can replant once you grow the plants. The hybrid seeds, you can't replant them and get the same plant back. And also, uh, for prepper supplies, check out My Patriot Supply. Now, pay attention. I'm going to show you uh, honeysuckles and muscadines. And talk about huckleberries. Here's a nice wild edible, wild grapes. Look at them here. I've got them in here. Growing. Wild grapes. Here, these are actually muscadimes. Going wild. Right here in my orchard. Believe it or not, this is supposed to be an orchard, but <laughs> I'll clean it out later, please. They're everywhere. They're good. That ain't quite right, but pretty close. Mmm. Of course, you need grape leaves while they're young. As you know, grape leaves are, these, now these are wild grapes, and you need to tame grapes or wild grapes. You know, the uh, Greeks make a nice stuff grape leaf. Quite right, but close. Oh, that one's good. Let's get out.
Muscat elms are not a bunch grape. They grow singles. But I've seen when I was a kid, they, we had vines that went top of poplar trees by my grandmother's place. And they would dump just and cover the forest floor with muscat elms when they were really ripe. They'd fall out and they were huge. And they were wonderful to eat. I loved it. And uh, usually the vines have got to be old to make. These are young vines and they're making nice. This is the huckleberry bush. So those nice little oblong little leaves. Last year, this bush and all my other huckleberry bushes, and I got lots of them here on the edge of my woods and in my woods, they made me a lot of berries. And I've had one that's always fruited every year. This year, there's no berries, not even a small one, not a berry on any of them. That's like the first time. And I don't know what's going on with huckleberry bushes this year. Is it a lack of pollinators? Why aren't my huckleberry bushes barren? It's a big ugly looking caterpillar right there. But I don't see any berries. And this is the first time. And here's another huckleberry bush in the woods. And they would also make berries in the woods. This one has made berries as have most of my others. Had a lot of berries out here last year. And this year, again, I see none. And again, I'm wondering if it's the pollinators, lack of pollinators. And uh, do you see my video, Insect Apocalypse, right now? Maybe that is affecting us right now. And maybe that's why I don't have huckleberries. So maybe Insect Apocalypse is not only going to affect us for our crops, it may affect our wild edibles too. We may be in some serious uh, trouble, my friends. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's just one of those years, but maybe it's not hot enough this year. That may be the problem. This is a cool summer. Maybe it needs to be hotter. I do think they grow in cooler climates too. Huckleberries. This year, none. Pollinators, very few. Are they related? You tell me. See my video. Insect apocalypse right now. Hello, we're going to talk about honeysuckle now. Honeysuckle is a nice sweet additive to the uh, diet from wild edibles. Now this one still has some dying yellow uh, flowers on here. And the, the, the yellow ones usually are the sweetest. Oh, these are about played out. A little too played out. And uh, they bloom really heavily in the early spring through the uh, Summer, this is the second day of September, and you can see there's still some fresh blooms in here and some that are about to make. So I will show you how on a fresh bloom, I'm going to try to pull it out all the way to the stem. You see the little green tip? Bite that tip off. Mm, that's where the sweet stuff is. And suck it. So the key thing to know is that if you're in a grid down situation, you need all the carbs you can get. And finding carbs uh, from just greens alone will be challenging, greens and meat. So uh, you need to find the sweet things, the fruits, as much as you can in the spring, summer, and fall. And there's a lot of edible flowers. And uh, you can actually make jellies, I believe, from honeysuckle flowers. Now, if you notice, the leaves are like two apart. This is the vine. This is what the vine looks like. You see that? The leaves are two apart. Opposite from each other. The little flowerettes are real pretty. And uh, they grow on a vine. That is not honeysuckle. That's a Bartlett pear that's growing up over. Honeysuckle vines crawl up on other plants. And this is a little Bartlett pear that's come up here. So uh, honeysuckle, something sweet to eat. And now here's a key thing. Uh, I'm not an expert on wild plants per se. You got to check with your local experts and know exactly what you're eating before you put anything in your mouth. Uh, there are some varieties, I'm told, of honeysuckle that are actually poisonous. They're not here, in my, to the best of my knowledge, in the southeast, because I mean, me and all my friends have ate honeysuckle all my life with no concern. But there are some areas where there are poison honeysuckle that grow. So I always check with your local expert before you put anything in your mouth. Because uh, even though there's a lot of good things to eat in the, in the forest, in the wilds, and many are good for you, there's all, and many are medicinal, there's some that make you sick and some that can kill you. So please... Know what you're putting in your mouth before you do so.